Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at Mitsuricon 2024 with Mr. Jameson Price. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> little, little bit of funniness between us at the beginning here. So it's been a while since we've seen each other, and since then you happen to work on Tekken 8 as uh, Paul Phoenix. Uh, as someone who grew up with the original 1, 2, and 3 Tekken, how is it like coming in and doing a very well-beloved fan character of, of, of Paul? Oh, it's a lot of fun. Paul's like... Just amazing! Yeah, no pain, no gain. Getting out there, uh, it's such a fun fighting game to play, and and also to, to voice. Yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, uh, the last one I think I did play was seven, and that's so I need to pick up eight because I'm also friends with uh, somebody currently uh, that really loves Tekken as king. So yeah, it's really fun. So uh, now again, kind of going back to some retro anime that got uh, made now in the art style of Astro Boy was Pluto. Tell us about working on Pluto. Yeah, Pluto is beautiful. Really interesting art style. Um, and uh, I love the story. I loved Astro Boy when I was growing up. I uh, watched a, a bunch of that stuff. And so it was a lot of fun to work on and be part of. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks awesome, especially because, like I said, it's that art style of Dr. Tezuka's. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So now you're very blessed to have this wonderful voice that is very good for narration. And it takes, you can totally tell that you very much. Uh, appreciate the instrument you're given. How do you make sure that you keep your instrument so well uh, suited to narration? Uh, well, since I talked to you in uh, 2018, uh, <clears throat> I did a big deep dive. My, my deep dive during the pandemic was uh, into voice health, um, breathing techniques, uh, because I want to keep this going, yeah. you know, so and preserve it. Um, so, I mean, water and rest is the key thing, but there are. Uh, Good posture and breathing techniques and things that um, that you learn you learn as a singer often. Yeah. As actors, we do a little bit, but um, more of that. Uh, I'm working on that kind of thing and just being able to support my voice and uh, relax. Tension is our enemy, <laughs> and so being able to relax into your voice really helps. Yeah, as I say, I need to take some of your guys' tips eventually when I'm doing this work. So, uh, again, last spring you've been now teaching uh, classes at Cal State Long Beach. Tell us how that's been going, becoming a teacher. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Um, I did some teaching in grad school, uh, and then right after it, teaching stage combat. I don't do stage combat anymore, but um, I, this, yes, this last semester I did a whole voice acting uh, semester. So it wasn't just video games and anime, which is what they wanted to do. I had them going through commercial work, narration work, and the whole gamut, because there's a lot of work out there as, as uh, voice actors. And so that was a lot of fun. Trying to cram all that into 16 weeks, that was the problem. <laughs> Especially only like two to three hour sessions, if, if possible, per day. Yep, it was, a one, it was four hours once a week. Oh, Jesus. That was crazy. Yeah. That, that's one of those like, oh, I, it'll be easy class. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Now, again, fall. Now, and now this fall, you're teaching directing at Orange Coast College. Tell us about how that class is going to be going. That's going really well. Just started. We only had one class, and then I had to come out here for Matsuricon. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but uh, it's going really well. Um, it's uh, directing for the stage. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't do anything like for voiceover directing or for uh, on-camera directing. So uh, I'm having to limit it to the stage, but that's fine. They're beginning directors. Uh, and it's just going back to kind of my roots as an actor and in theater and explaining how you make stage pictures and, and talk to actors, get them to do what you want them to do, <laughs> and move them around the stage. Hey, go here, go there. You know, all that fun stuff. Stage right, stage left. Yep. Now, you happen to work on the, uh, now kind of now going into your work, you happen to work on the hit anime and game Persona 5 at the same time. Uh, did you, at the same time of recording the game, um, and it was going very popular, how's it been for the fan responses to both, obviously, the anime and the game working on both at the same time? The response has been amazing. Uh, everybody loves the coffee dad, <laughs> Sojiro. Um, and it's been wonderful. It was such a pleasure to play a character that had some emotional movement and arc so that I got to go from being the get off my lawn, tough dad, uh, to a really kind of caring, you know, empathic character. And uh, he, he changes the kids and kids change him. And it's, that's so much fun to play as an actor. I say I have not fallen into the persona universe in any way, shape, or form. So everybody's like, these are really great characters. And I'm like, I know. I just I haven't had time to play all these wonderful RPGs. Time. Yeah. Yes. Uh. Now, again, kind of going back to your 
you're teaching and all that. You're also working with Strawberry Hill Studios presents on a few projects involving the study of voice acting. How are those projects going and, and what, um, what can fans expect when they come to one of your events? Uh, really well. Strawberry Hill's great. Um, they have a huge ton of, uh, of information out there, lots of different actors uh, that they are working with. Again, the pandemic kind of opened up that yeah. global thing. Um, I teach a lot of stuff, uh, basically vocal health um, and um, some workout stuff. Uh, I did a whole physical action yeah. uh, s series, which was really kind of fun because I physicalize in the booth. I do a lot of things moving my body around in different ways. Especially with the yelling. Yes. And then the last one was one on how to age your voice, uh, older or younger, and what we as actors, voice actors do to kind of do that, because we have to. Right. We have to play all different ages, and so we work on sounding older or sounding younger. Yeah. No, I mean, I, uh, you can totally tell when you are hitting a more mature voice versus a middle-aged voice to then, like, I don't know if you can hit those 20-year-old 20, 20 voices anymore, <laughs> but... <a> little tough. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you have to hit those, you have to hit that range, and you try to do the best you can, and I think that's cool. I think uh, Karen Strassman is yes. also part of Strawberry Hill. Yes, I saw that. Karen does a lot of good work in there. Her accent stuff is amazing. Alrighty, I guess I'll have to check that out. Now, again, going back and talking about fighting games, you're also in Mortal Kombat at Ermac, another fan favorite uh, who has a very long history in the, in the Mortal Kombat franchise. How's it been working on Ermac? Oh, it's been great. Um, yeah, Michael McConaughey did it in 9. I took over in X or 10. He didn't really show up much in 11, but this now in MK1, there's a lot of backstory with Ermac uh, and King Jared coming out, um, of him and coming to the forefront of this kind of multiple, all the souls locked in this character. Uh, yeah, it was really interesting. And Ermac is such a kind of fun, complex character. And I'm amazed at how much of a fan favorite he is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, the reason I put it on here is because I saw a comment when you were announced that people were like, oh, yeah, Ermac, yay! I was like, I have to include this for that that one or two fans that were like, Ermac, all right. I was like, I got you guys, I got you. So speaking of really fun video games that have a long franchise, Final Fantasy VII, you come in for a rebirth. First, how was it like working on it? Oh, it was, it was fun. It was just a, uh, a little bit of Zangan. Um, but, yeah, Final Fantasy VII, I did uh, Reeve Twesty years ago, and it was just a little tiny bit. I was like, I got a, a little toe in that universe. It was like, oh, this is kind of fun. And uh, then coming back and doing Zangan um, was really fun. Trying not to do Sean Connery, but he looked so much like Sean Connery. Um, but uh, I get to do some kind of you know, sensei teaching uh, and all the yeah, leading, um, leading him in exercises. Um, I, when I did the little demo, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. It's a lot of fun. I say because John over here is actually our Final Fantasy nerd of the of the whole group, especially of Seven. Seven's still his favorite. So again, speaking of that, being how popular it is, uh, Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth is a little bit different because of all the backstory it has. How did you feel going into that? Well, look, backstory is great. We love story. Um, story is what it, that's all actors are all about. You know, going into and doing all the action is one thing, but having stories to tell and backstories to fill out. You know the mythology of things. That's where Mortal Kombat is amazing. This the, the kind of mythology that they've created and the backstories on everything, is just delightful. It's so much fun to play. So backstories is what really pulls you into a lot of good, got a lot of good stuff. All right, cool, cool. I mean, I do like backstory as well as as a, as a fan of many many franchises as well. Well, it changes um, the way you approach the character, mm -hmm. so that you know your character may be written one way. Uh, and then you can adjust the backstory, and it changes the way you approach that same, those same words yeah. in different ways. And I mean, it's part of what acting is all about. Yeah. We will create, if we need to have some sort of certain emotion or action going on, as actors, we will create a backstory that will make us do that. Okay. And sometimes it's what's written on the page and a writer's done something. Or if we need to get somewhere and it's not on the page, we'll make it up. <laughs> All right, you know, speaking about how, how you're very much been part of the industry for a long, long time, oh, yeah. um, you started back in the late 90s. Uh, when is, you know, and we talked about, you know, the pandemic changing things, but, you know, for you, it went from that classic old school hand drawn to cell drawn to then digital drawn. Yeah. So, what, what would you say was one of those bigger changes for you personally as an actor that you saw that impacted the industry and how it'll shape going forward Western um, animation? God, well, the biggest change is now this <laughs> it's mainstream yeah. um it was such a an, a niche market for so long 
um, and beautiful artwork and everything. And it's amazing how that's changed and grown and grown, uh, gone in different directions. And there's such a variety of, yeah. of I mean, it, anime isn't just one thing. It's there's so many things that you can uh, find in art styles. Um, but this is the popularity of it, and and how many people enjoy it now is. That's been the biggest change, and it's wonderful. It's wonderful to see. All righty, now kind of wrapping things up real quick. Yeah. I know about NDAs, and I know how much you work on it, and how hard it is for you not to talk about them. Is there anything currently that we didn't talk about that you want to say to the fans? I think that's all I can say. Okay. Yeah, there's, okay. uh, yeah we, we can't talk about much, uh, unfortunately, in this business. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. So real quick, where can I find you online if I want to keep up with your work? And then secondly, what would you like to say to all the wonderful fans that have been enjoying your voice for over 20 plus years? Well, you can find me on, uh, on Facebook. I'm an old guy. Uh, I have a uh, Jameson Price public page, which I try to keep up. But again, there's not much I can say. Uh, Instagram is Jameson Price. Uh, Twitter, now X, is also at Jameson Price. Although I don't check Twitter, X, whatever it is, much anymore. Uh, but Instagram, I'm trying to be a little more on. Um, so that's where you can find me. And uh, I just want to say thank you to all the fans. Uh, just your dedication and your enjoyment of, of this art form and what we do is it makes it all worthwhile and makes it all happen. So thank you. Again, I have had so much fun just listening to you right now. Thank <laughs> oh, you so much. You are so welcome, Cameron. Thank you.